Hey guys, it's James from Forex Alchemist here, and I'm here to bring you another one of our expert guides. This is the last one in the series of Endless Space 2 expert guides that we're going to be doing. This one is going to be on the Vodiani. So before I get started here, this the doing the Vodiani will require a little bit more setup than the other races. If you guys have watched our uh, PvP games before or have seen the way that we set up um, the these expert guides, you'll notice that we never include Vodiani in the um, in the AIs. We use only other factions instead, and we've mentioned multiple times that we actually have banned the Vodianis from our PvP play. And this is for a couple of different reasons. Um, and we'll get into these a little bit more in the video when we can talk about them individually, but the, th the main thing that I wanted to do first to set this up is to talk a little bit about the power curves of, the, of each of the different factions. And so most races, and I think I'm going to switch over to a little thing here to show you guys uh, as we lead through it, most factions, like the Lumeris in brown here, or the Riftborn in light, light blue um, have very few games where they're super weak and very few games when they're super strong. And most of the games tend to follow kind of like you end up with some kind of strength in the middle. Um, some really strong races like the Unfallen tend to have their average be a higher level than most other factions. And weak races like the Horatio tend to have their average be weaker than most other factions. The Vodiani, though, uh, as you can kind of tell from here, here they are in dark blue, they follow a different uh, pattern than all of these other races that are kind of shaped like hills with different sizes and positions. Um, the Vodiani are more like sometimes they're super, super, super weak, and sometimes they're super, super, super strong, and there's very little in the middle. And so instead of just starting one random game and bringing you guys uh, what we would do in that one game, instead I'm going to do the first 30 turns of a game out here where we show how strong the Vodiani can be. And then at the end, I'm going to have the first few turns of a different game showing this is how tough it can be if you start on the other side of the spectrum. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and boot up the game, and we'll get into a Vodiani expert guide. Okay guys, here we are loaded in, and we're going to try to do the best we can, seeing how this game of the Vodiani is going. Uh, I'm recording these before I really know which one is which, so I'm going to do a few, and that way like, I don't know too much information ahead of time or whatever, um, so that I can explore as I would be exploring with any game. So we'll just see how this one is going, and uh, yeah, and then if we'll figure out if it's good Yanni or bad Yanni, as we like to call it. Um, okay, so we've got a pinwheel-shaped galaxy, and I'm out in the middle of one of the pinwheels which suggests to me that there may be one other major sieve over here, um, and there almost definitely is one other major sieve in this kind of direction, and I have four paths f out, from my, uh, out from my headquarters here. So the Vodiani mechanic for population is different than all of the other races. So instead of starting with three population, the Vodiani start with one population, um, but they apply their population, or they, they sit in these arcs, right? Um, I guess we should go into some basics on, on how the Vodiani work for guys who might be coming to the expert guides without playing them before. Um, because the Vodiani are so different than the other races. So unlike all other uh, factions in Endless Space 2, the Vodiani populations, they don't live on the planets within the systems. They live on these huge arcs. And these arcs um, 
then exploit all of the planets in the star system that they're attached to. So we start with one population on our arc here, which is hooked up to this system of Kolchab, and every planet that we are allowed to exploit, like if you could colonize it, it's automatically colonized and being used by every one of your population. So we have one Vodiani population, but he's exploiting each of our three planets. We have Boreal, Tundra, Tundra. So this is one of the things that makes the Vodiani um, either super strong or super weak at the beginning, because if you have a opening system that has more than one other planet that you can colonize at the beginning, the Vodiani start with all of those planets automatically colonized, automatically making stuff. So right now we start with um, a total of 31 dust being made by our system. We start with 40 science, which are really good numbers. And the reason for it is that, you know, we're getting 10 science and seven dust from this place and 10 science and seven dust from this place um, for free. There are other times where you start with just our tundra planet and you have only the 10 science um, plus the, yeah, plus the 10 from your arc module. So without these two planets, we would have half of the science that we would otherwise start with. No other, sorry for that noise there. No, no other um, civilization has starts that swingy at turn one where you could be producing, you know, half the science as a different start. So, so this is pretty good, right? Starting with three, uh, three planets already here. We have our wheel, which is our scout ship that has this module here and a probe. It's got a base movement speed really fast of five, almost as fast as the Sophon ships. And it can use this module to draw essence from either minor civilizations or major factions. We'll talk about essence in a second. And then it's got a probe slot. So essence is the special resource of the Vodiani here. And it's what their whole play style revolves around. Basically, you use this action down here, harvest essence, when you're on top of a, another civilization. I'm going to close some doors if this beeping is keep, going to keep happening outside. OK, sorry there. This should be a little bit quieter. Um, so as I was saying, so you harvest this essence from minor civilizations or major civilizations, and it builds up turn by turn. So your wheel that gives you that has one module gives you uh, 13 a turn. It's really 12 and a half, I think, because these leechers here, which is the replacement for colony ships, you start with one of these that has four modules and it gives you 50 a turn, which would be 12 and a half times four. These guys are super expensive to build. So you start with one of these and you basically can't build a new one. Unlike, for example, the unfallen vine ship, uh, which is pretty easy to replace. The leecher, for example, would take us 14 turns to build, even with our three planets that we start with. So it's almost impossible to replace uh, this leecher unit. So it's super, super, super important to protect it. Our, let's see, our government, we start as a federation, which is uh, one of the worst governments to begin with. Uh, you don't get the bonus to law effect like the, um, like the Republic, and you only have one access to a law, unlike democracy. So. You start with uh, religious and military as your two political parties, neither of which are particularly good. Um, you also start with a pretty low approval, only 40% here because yeah, you, you start with Tundra, you don't have any, any bonuses to things. So we're going to explore and see if we find some luxury resources, but usually um, Super Tax Act is going to be the way to go instead of Toys for Boys, because Toys for Boys will not improve us from 40%, like 40% to 60% isn't enough to make us happy, so there's like no benefit there. Regarding Essence, the next thing to mention is that Vodiani do a pretty bad job making food. So unlike other races, they don't 
grow very fast naturally from food. You can see even with 23 bonus production, it's taking them 52 turns to grow. Um, they can instead grow here using Holy Proliferation for 250 essence. And similar to Riftborn, um, like your first one costs 250 and then your next one costs more. So your, your second one costs 250, your third one costs, I think, 350 and 450, and then it goes up and up and up. Or you can build another arc and for, for 500. And this also goes up the more arcs you have. So the first one's 500, and then your maximum essence raises to 1,000. Then your third arc is 1,000, etc. Your arc comes with one automatic Vodiani and uh, also can be detached and flown like a ship. So if we double click on this guy, you can see it's actually a ship with 14,000 health, five movement speed, and modules that you can put into it, including, you know, it can draw essence. Uh, I don't know why you would want to do that, but because it's still only drawing 13 a turn here, but you could, um, and various other things. You can add missiles to it, give it even more power, etc. We're not going to do that with our starting arc, but just letting you know it's possible. And this is the thing that is determines whether it's hooked up to a colony or not. So it needs an action point to hook up to the colony. So you can't fight something and then rehook up. And if you're not hooked up, you're not using any of the planets, so you're not getting any dust whatsoever or any science whatsoever. So at the beginning, you usually want to stay hooked up to the planet. Okay. Our hero here is a religious guardian. Um, he's got some decent early early uh, combat abilities, 20% shields and 10% health, the extra industry per hot and food really actually do very little. I don't know why they would give the Vodiani hero food because it doesn't help them that much. Um, so really I think of him as a combat hero almost exclusively. He's got this plus 40% damage to fleet over here and plus 40% energy weapons up here. Um, and then, you know, the eight movement speed points. But the reason, and if you've seen other games that we've done, the reason that Vodiani heroes are banned is this ability, infallible authority, which is quite silly. Um, we're not sure exactly how this one slipped past the balancing team, because th what this does is like, okay, let, let's just compare a little bit. So 40% um, industry, that's a good ability, right? The, these are all strong abilities out here. Eight movement speed for the fleet, extra damage on the ship. Yeah, the top ones aren't that good. But, but like looking at this one, for example, this is an extra industry and food per population. So if you have five population, you get five extra industry, five extra food. With this one, it's four extra Fidzi per population per hero level. So if you're, I think you have to be like level 10 or 12 to get out here. Um, so, but let's just take an example and say you're 20, right? If you're level 20, then you get 80 Fidzi per pop, plus 80 Fidzi per population. So if you have five population, <laughs> you have plus 400 food, influence, dust, science, and, and industry. Uh, 400 from five population. So that's, yeah. And then if he's the Senate, it actually is five. So it'd be 500 instead of 400. Um, so this is just like a little bit wrong, clearly, because it's just much too big. And we haven't figured out why it's there. Um, and instead of banning using it, um, we just decided to ban Vodiani heroes altogether. In our, in our PvP games. Even without this ability though, um, the Vodiani beat out the Sofans as one of the best general heroes because they have, similar to the Sofans, this energy weapon damage and these, this great movement points ability, um, which make them quite strong. And uh, yeah, and then at the end, they have this very nice damage and fleet health. Um, 
bonus. So with that, that kind of like general overview, what we use our hero for at the beginning is to assign him to our fleet. So he's pretty worthless. Oh, let's do one more thing, just checking in here. So he gives a little extra influence if he's assigned to the system, and he gives damage if he's assigned to the fleet as his starting abilities. So we're going to assign him here, but we're not going to use him very much. So what we're going to do with our starting dust is we're going to explore one, two. Oh, well, that's good. This gray circle here means that there's a minor sieve in this direction. That means that this is good Yanni. With three starting planets. Hello, Zavali. With three starting planets. Um, this is definitely good news for the Vodiani. So what we're going to then do here is that this wheel, he's going to definitely head over here and start leeching as well. Um, and our hero is going to be responsible for more most of the early um, ex exploration. So we want him to get uh, some probes here. And we're going to pull back the defense there a little bit. Might even pull away one gun so that we can upgrade for... Ah, oh, no, we'll leave that gun. We're getting good dust from our uh, from our three planets, so we can leave him like this, upgrade his move speed and give him a probe. Great. And then for our wheel here, we'll, we'll just swap those two. It's just to do a little little probe reset here. And now we've got four things, so we will one, two, three, four. We found titanium. Long season is a bad one. Transvine and dust trees. So transvine <laughs> means that all of a sudden, we're devoted on turn one. That's not bad. So we immediately get plus 30% extra science and dust. So we're at 52 science, turn one. Hello, hello. Which means we're about as fast as the Sophons at finishing Xenolinguistics, which will allow us to automatically exploit our titanium. And then we'll exploit our Hyperium right afterwards. So let's do like these guys. And then was this an ash over here? It was. So we can actually exploit that ash as well. Maybe next. So let's let's do it this way for now. There's no particular hurry in uh, this one. And so then we'll separate these guys. Our hero is going to go exploring. You're going to go over here. Cool. And then as far as first constructions, um, generally, I would be going for um, Cerebral Reality is a very nice one to start with if you don't have three planets already. But Public-Private Partnerships here is going to give plus 40 science. So I'm going to go for that one right away. OK, cool. So uh, and then also Toys for Boys, I said <laughs> sometimes we could use it if we got some bonus happiness, but again, we don't need it, and because because we're already ecstatic at 90, and so Super Tax Act is going to reduce us a little bit, but not so much as to make us not devoted, so we'll take the extra dust there. So, see we went up 12 dust, because we get it for three people, not one, and we go down three because we're getting it for three, as if it, we had three population instead of one. So super cool. Hero is also level two. <clears throat> we will give him uh, bonus health. Sure. OK. So with that, we can go ahead and move to the next turn, I believe. Yeah, we're not going to do any more fleet shenanigans, so let's do it. 
finding this on turn one, pretty pretty nice, pretty big deal. Um, we also have the curiosities goal here, so we'll have to keep that in mind as well. So here we just have them start to harvest essence, and we'll, we'll be going up by 50 a turn, a little bit more when our pal gets here. And then our hero, we'll have him go explore this way. Now the limitation is that minor sieves, they don't much like having their resources exploited. So, especially since, actually since we're in such a good spot, what we should be doing is protecting ourselves against that um, in the future. So our hero starts with a really good, this limo, is a, or flag, excuse me, <clears throat> is a really good fighting ship. It starts with, you know, 80 attack, uh, and we can bump up its defense a little bit later as well. But our wheel here, and our leecher, who has no guns, they're not very good fighting ships. So around turn 11, when the pirates spawn, we want to be there, making sure that uh, nothing's going to happen. So why don't we create a little, we'll call it the Goodyani Defender ship. That will be in the exploration class. And we're just going to give it, yeah, you can make pretty strong ships here. So we'll get a couple of missiles and one of these. Let's maybe even like a baby version of that ship. So, oops, not that. I want to give it one of these. So it can have some attack and yeah, it's got two attack modules. This is, by the way, one of the best uh, early ships that can be built. The Empire one is slightly better. It has five modules for their scout ship, but, but this one's pretty good on par with the Cravers, basically. So this one costs 120. If we replace that with a dust or with an essence gathering module, it's 216. So why don't we leave it open for now? Um, I think five move is going to be plenty. Then it's only 96. We'll create that design. And then we'll figure out what we want to do with it with our dust later. And yeah, and it's not super critical that we do it right now. It's just important that we have it ready um, around turn 11. So finishing it on turn nine should be just fine from our perspective. Okay. So that's it for this turn. We'll get our first essence together. And now that we have a pretty clear view on where our arc is going to be, um, the next important thing from our perspective here is to find out where, or sorry, from how to get our first arc with our first 500 essence. The next question will be what we want to do with said arc. And that's why I'm going to start probing in towards the middle of the universe over here, middle of the galaxy over here. So and this guy, he can, oh wait. We have yeah, 12 here. Um, manpower is another big thing that we want to be able to work on. So we want to find a second minor sieve to help us with our manpower. Because this one, uh, it's difficult to impress them. Because by leeching them, we actually reduce our impact. Um, so let's throw a probe out this way. And then we'll begin leeching together and leech 63 a turn. Okay. Yeah, so a second minor civilization, if we find them, we can impress them and start getting extra manpower every turn. Okay. So we're at 52 a turn. So in five turns, we can have our ash planet, which will we have an well, this is basically an extra free population. And after that, we're going to want to get ubiquitous surveillance um, because of the manpower issue that I talked about before. You want our arc to have a ton of extra manpower. 
All right, and then that's it for this turn. So our first quest is always the same. It has us kill two pirates. Uh-oh. <laughs> and our hero friend, he's moving straight into the pirates. Fantastic. All right, so what we're going to do here, the second pirate is over here. All right, phew. <laughs> we quickly told him to move in the other direction so that he didn't get ambushed by those pirates, which are a little bit stronger. It's two ships, so it's a bit stronger than he can handle one-on-one. -on -one. Um, yeah, so it looks like, as we suspected, the constellation is going to continue in this direction. It's turn six now, so we're going to want to start coming home. so that we can be here on turn seven. And then we're gonna, yeah, really wanna start exploring more. So like here, for example. But you'll see when we get our arc, we will be able to explore quite quickly indeed. All right. And point-wise, you see we start with very low points because it doesn't do a good job evaluating what our point totals are um, or how strong we are based on our points. We're at 300 dust. Hooray, hooray. Our hero hits level three. We'll just give him more of this stuff. Cool. We are two turns from atmospheric filtration. may this long season and the shattered crust here may cause us to lose um, our devoted so we might switch over to super ta or to toys for boys after this but we'll see how it goes also notice that each vodiani population doesn't just let us use this uh, like the baseline stats but the population itself has plus four fids um, so in addition to the base characteristics of the planet, so like here we have 11 industry, as soon as we populate that, it'll actually give us a 15 extra industry, which ain't too bad. Uh, Xeno Industrial is also gonna be pretty strong in that situation. So, okay. And we plow forward. We're starting to make our little fighter ship, which will be ready in three turns, hopefully one sooner. We'll see how it goes, but we'll be able to survive the first round just fine with our, our two ships that we've already got. So then here, we're gonna throw one out this way. And move to next. Yep, and then we're one one turn short. If we had gotten our uh, nice, okay. If we had gotten our wheel ship to here the exact same turn um, as our leecher and gotten them started together, then he would have or we would be able to get our arc one turn sooner because we would have already had an extra twelve and a half essence. So instead, we're going to be in a slightly suboptimal situation, but it's not the end of the world. Okay, so we're going to fly through to here. Yep, and now you can see we're producing stuff over here. We've fallen down to content. So as suspected, we're going to want to switch over to Toys for Boys so that we're up to ecstatic again so that we can get this devoted bonus for a few more turns. 
Ubiquitous Surveillance is going to be finished in one. We're up to 110 science a turn on turn nine, um, which isn't too bad. And now we're going to have to think about what we want to do next. From a luxury perspective, we're gaining two Transvine per turn, which isn't too many. But I think that yeah, we don't see um, many other white planets. Oh, hey, look, there's a pal over there. That's exactly what we want to have happening. So this means something very good indeed from our perspective. Very good indeed. So. Major sieves are actually easier to bully than minor sh minor sieves for the Vodiani because they can uh, because the minor sieves spawn pirates. The even the endless difficulty um, major sieves they don't fight back very hard, especially once we start doing what we're about to do to them. So here we go. We have three hundred dust. 50 influence. We're gonna leech these guys for another one and a half turns, and then we'll be done with them. Okay. Oh, I want to use my dust effectively, so we're gonna grab Hyperium after this, and then we're gonna go for Galactic Commodities. If we wanted to look around at some of these planets, you notice I haven't even really done that yet. We've got Lava Desert Arids, some arids and gas giants, snow baron, ash and gas. So, like, there's not actually very much good stuff around us, but we don't need it because we're not going to plan on going to another civilization uh, or going to another planet with our arc. We're going to use our arc as a, an interstellar death missile. We're in last place score-wise again, but this doesn't bug me. Okay, so plasma metallurgy, check. So here we go, got our guy here. Now we only need another 12 and a half, 12. Um, essence, so I can take my leecher, actually, and start moving him in this direction, and only get the wheel. Gives you that message that you've depleted the colony every time you join up fleets, and we actually do pull food from them, and you saw that we, they had two population before, and now they only have one, because we actually do pull five food from them every time, which is kind of what we're going to do these guys over here as well. So we're going to go leech that outpost, which will be a much juicier target with fewer pirates. Okay. Now, yep, it's going to start Xeno you know, Industrial next turn. Perfect. And one of the reasons it's nice from our perspective is that we want to... Oh, I should have thrown out some probes, because I have yep, full probes there. So, we've got some positrons, one good one and one medium one. So, we're, we should be strong at, yeah, long and medium range. So, we'll just do this. We should win. Yep. No problem. Now, we're at 500 power on our arcs. So, we're going to stop sapping them, first of all. Second, we're going to praise them twice. Oop, 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 oop. I accidentally auto explored instead of checking out their curiosity. <laughs> Oops. Well, that was not quite my intention. But, okay, doesn't matter too much because we are the Vodiani. Now, we're going to go and design our arc. So here's our arc. 
We haven't explored it too many curiosities and stuff. Um, so we only have our default weapons. It means we're going to be lower than normal power for our our arc. We're going to do bullets, and slugs, and missiles for a nice kinetic combination there. We're going to have yeah. We're going to have two hulls and one shields, and we're going to have the best so three. Um, three warp drive modules for 12 movement speed and one manpower module so that we can have 600 manpower here. So we're going to apply that and this is you know basically what every like the, the worst case scenario for the Vodiani arc at this juncture right because you know we only have 2800 power on turn 11. So sad. So then we're going to build that arc. Okay, and as I mentioned, we're going to want additional manpower from these guys, which is why they're going to be important for us. All right, so now that we've got this ship, this ship, we're, we could give it another one of these draw essence modules, which would cost us 180 isn't too bad. What if we gave it so for 200 we can turn it into another one of our wheels. I kind of like that. Let's do it that way. Yeah. And then he can go down and already start checking out this guy. Okay. Next thing we're going to want to do, we got our plasma metallurgy going on, is we're going to want to get autonomous construction in a little bit. Cool, cool. All right, charging forward. So we got our metallurgy. We've got no manpower left. So this guy, he only has 55. Um, yeah, 55 manpower, but he moves quite fast, so we send him towards the enemy. Or sorry, not 55 manpower, 55 um, infantry is the word I was looking for. Sorry about that, guys. Okay. Now we're also starting to exploit this Hyperium at last. And did I move this guy without upgrading him? I think I did. I think I moved him without upgrading him. Very clever. Okay, now we're going to separate these two guys, send the wheel down this way, and send the hero back this way. So he can use his probes. One there. For a little extra titanium, fine. And then this is just the end of that thing here, so we'll throw another one down there to check out whatever's in that neighborhood. Okay, and now we're doing slightly better with these guys. We'll do five. So and we're wasting again one turn before they start giving us manpower. But Again, not too bad, because we're very far ahead of where any other civilization can be. Um, by the way, the other way of producing essence in the early game is this guy, Alms for Essence. It eats all of your industry for no benefit, and your dust, it turns 25% of it into uh, essence. So we can get a total of 21 essence, but then it, turn, it leeches or it makes us lose all of our dust, basically. Um, we go to minus 35 and can build nothing for 21 essence a turn, which gets us basically nowhere. So it's quite quite useless. Never use it um, unless you, you know, your leecher gets destroyed as you're just about to be able to build an arc or something. Um, yep, with that, we'll move forward. 
it's for it's for rounding errors, I guess you could say. All right, we move forward all of our guys. Oh, we didn't get the ten curiosities, but no big deal. We are the Vodiani, so we fly our ship forward. Hello, Empire. So with our arc here, Ooh, it's pretty fast. Yes, be hostile. Also with our religious um, connection here, or whatever, with our, our religious ability, <clears throat> um, the Vodiani uh, can invade people even with, even while we're inside the borders of their colony or whatever, like it doesn't matter. So, yeah. So we can just plow all of our ships onto their home world and just take it over uh, without even having to declare war. And of course, we don't just take people over, we uh, murder them. And then occupy their, ter their broken territory. So, turn 13, we have a 3,000 power ship that's almost at the home world, I presume that's the home world, of our first foreign power. Okay. And a couple of other ships coming right behind. Ta-da! We'll kill that AI transport thing. <coughs> Excuse me. Move this other stuff along, and hey! So, we found some Cravers as well. Now, they've got 220 people here, which means... Excuse me? <coughs> that they've got slightly more troops than we can handle on them. Uh, but we've got other guys coming here, so we're just going to start blockading this. And, uh, and wait for our pals here to catch up. And as long as we're here, we are going to check out anomalies and ruins. Because, yeah, because getting missiles or hull plating or something like that is just so good for us, but usually it's really weapons that are the best things for us to uh, to get from a, a scout. All right, so it's going to be three more turns unless we get 85 influence, which we won't. All right, these guys, I didn't give them an essence training module, but not a huge deal. Because we're going to go seep out these guys. So these cravers, yeah, we can just say like we don't really like them, so we're gonna stand at a distance, have them run away. Um, we'll change our battle cards here so that we throw away this dust one and bring in the damage on long range. We're just going to be fighting at long range whenever possible so that we shoot our missiles out at the enemy. And this guy, he's here. They have no troops on their place right now, so we could invade them. But I think it's fine if we just, uh, just leech at them. Which is how we're going to do it. And then meanwhile... This guy, he's got eight more infantry and a little bit of ability to sap, so we're going to move him over there. 
And we've got some more pirates on their way to us, but don't really care. And we will actually be pumping up our industry, our inf excuse me, our infantry. Um, or our tanks, I should say, because we have autonomous construction in one turn. And so we'll be pumping up our tanks with that 400 dust right here. And then we can start an invasion. So that's how we're going to do it. We've got the freedom to make something new here. Autonomous construction. <laughs> the pirates come in and decide that they want to fight our Ark. And we say, sure thing, buddy. Vodiani have way less trouble with pirates kind of coming to their home place than anyone else. And now we can say, hmm, well, what do we want to build here? Let's just build, I guess, supermarkets, cerebral reality, you know, whatever. Because our other arc is taking out this place, which has a Terran steps and snow. So we'll work on that stuff in a little bit. Okay, and so now, yeah, we still don't have the manpower to do the switch. This is why I need these guys. Uh, so we're going to wait a couple more turns, I think. So these guys, he can get here in two turns. We've got 50 essence. We're just going to move everybody over here. And draw from these guys. It'll take three turns for him. All right, we'll get the last curiosity there, which was dust trees. Ooh, got some extra vision. Oh boy. A few more turns for him to head over there. Okay, so we continue on. It's now turn 17. Again, nearly last, but now the Empire is worst. Atmospherics. And he's trying to send a ship. It's his patrol ship. Somehow escaped our clutches here, I guess. We've got double his manpower now. So we could just go ahead and invade, but we will be getting 50 manpower a turn. So let's see this really quick. We'll be able to get 30% tanks next turn, which probably will go faster than anything else we're going to be doing. So we'll wait one more turn, and then we'll uh, yeah, go ahead and take them over. Okay. Now these two guys, they can merge and suck. You can attack this corvette, which has kinetics, probably some missiles, yeah. But it immediately runs, as you would expect. If you were facing down what we've got, now we've got 77 manpower, which means that we're going to take our guys here, shift 30% to the tanks, and boost those tanks in power with our dust there. And we're going to go ahead and, uh, yeah, now we can start an invasion. And we have no problem just doing guerrilla actions here. Although preemptive bombing may even be better. Yep, because we want to destroy their population. Now, which we didn't do very effectively, unfortunately. So, 
but it's fine. Like we can just, one of the other things that is great once we've got this little bit of manpower together is like even if our invasion isn't going so well, like they conscript all their guys and whatnot, then um, we can go s throw down our arc anywhere else at like the next system over or whatever. And, and then he can get all of the manpower back on the arc. So that's what we'll do. All right, we've got our commodities exchange, which means we have access to level twos there. Then we have the steps and the snow from our next place that we want to conquer up there. So why don't we just go ahead and take those? Um, So here, do we want to bomb more? Or do we want to just gorilla? Yeah, I think we'll just gorilla. Oh, he could script it again. Oh, and he has the he show, right. All right, we'll continue. As I said, Once we've got the manpower, like this is crippling him so much, he's not going to be able to survive. He can't have any fleets. So we just let him uh, basically get, get starved out. And then we'll go regenerate our manpower. some new stuff over here. Found a couple of new minor sieves. And of course we're now getting our essence again. So we can build up hmm, probably another leecher at this juncture. Sounds good. And we're going to bomb them again, and then retreat. OK, they just did a protection. So we don't have any troops left here. As I mentioned, this isn't a huge deal for us. I'm going to keep um, fighting them for sure, because we're gaining 50 manpower per turn. Yep. Oh, this is actually going to run out, so we'll have to do a little bit more to get them up to 50, or we'll be gaining 100 manpower a turn. And uh, yeah, and we're just going to go refuel and come back stronger and keep them on the ropes. We can go up to 70. Well, we'll do it next turn where we'll ha be able to do it all. Our hero is level four. You can give bonus shield capacity. Here, uh, I like scientists best, but you know, often you go religious and military. Yeah, since we're being quite aggressive, um, staying as religious is fine, so that we can continue to. Uh, not have any difficulties with uh, declaring, like not having to declare war is kind of nice. All right, take us two turns to get over here, and we'll fuel up. And even though, <clears throat> yeah, we'll fuel up over here. Or can we get here and t t t t no? Yeah, so we'll just do fuel up over here. Okay. And these guys can continue to probe out in this direction. We've got, again, more than the Empire will be able to manage in this little while. 
We continue to wheedle them down bit by bit. Some nice sieves over here. Good. This is expired, so we'll start doing that. And we'll do the same. So that doesn't get us quite where we want. There are our friends as well. Okay. Everybody likes us over here. There we go. <laughs> we'll do that with them to start getting some additional manpower from those guys. Yes. Okay. Influence is pretty valuable for us at this juncture. Okay. Yes, I know. You're not our pal. These guys will just throw their pirates into us and we'll be able to defend just fine. We have enough for our proliferation, so we'll get four new pop. Oh. Our, our arc randomly got reduced to zero move. So we can't go settle over here and recharge. Hmm. That's irritating. Well, he'll recharge 25%. That's okay, I guess. It's okay. And, yeah, we do have a fair amount of good stuff. So, yeah, I guess it'll be fine. Now, with, you can use our better hull plates. Apply that. Yeah, you don't need the arc to be uh, away from... Oh, by the way, before we do that, let's make sure we go like that as much as possible. Good. Yes, he'll reach in as much as he can there. Um, but now we're at 100% tanks. Great. Get another population. Great. And then we'll we'll be back in business over here in no time. He show. Good stuff. Yeah, we need to get ourselves the rest of the way here. But it's fine. We have plenty of time. The Empire definitely aren't going anywhere. And we're just happy to be leeching more essence. We've got our eukaryotic sap. We'll get some upgraded um, foodstuffs here and here so we can start making our own population. Found another minor sieve. All right, these guys can move again, but with 11 tanks, I want them to have a bit more. A bit more. We'll try to go full, which we should be able to do in another turn or two. Might be two more turns. Okay. And we're constantly just wheedling these guys down. They can't do anything. Our ship is too big. We finished our leecher over here. Tell us. Tell us what you... How dare you threaten... Oh my goodness, he declared war. What a what a rude man. I find that highly detestable. And rude. Okay, so what I'm going to do here, let's come back and see how we're drop off, drop off some more tanks. He's going to try to prevent us from doing things, I guess. I don't know. 
Uh, and so as you can see, the holy proliferation, it's, sorry, it's not 350, it's 500 now. So we actually want to be um, leveling up in the more normal way. So we'll just uh, make one of the, a couple of these defender guys to drive off them pirates or them empire. Good stuff. So now they have 20 or 90 left. Oh, they have some curiosities down here. Let's see what they got. Oh, some adamantine. Yeah, we'll give up 100. Science for a new tech, always. All right, and we can get them to commit more there, or we can just go and we'll uh, refill our manpower to maximum in a second. Or not fully maximum, but near maximum. And turn 27. Let's see if we can... We might go a couple extra turns and take out uh, an opposing major sieve. Okay. Yes, Mr. Pirates, you're welcome to attack me. We're getting a science hit there because of these guys. But, as I said, I'm not too worried. And so now we'll go over here. We'll hook up to that. And normally we would be healing 25%, but if we hook up here, then we're only healing 20%. What's this? It's supposed to go faster if we're hooked up this way. Whatever. So, and we're just using this snow thing, so it's not too big of a deal. Um, on this side, we can just go ahead and make a little bit of extra essence. What? These guys aren't doing it anymore? That's silly. They're supposed to be doing it. Okay. And the Empire guy left. These guys can start coming down this direction. Yeah, minus 71, so what the hell, how come it only says plus 14%? Oh, probably because it's the same as here. Yeah, probably the same amount of, hello. I can't too afford it. Whatever. Whatever, guys. As you can tell, this is like a little bit sloppy for for our expert guides. And so I do owe you big fans of Fodiani some apology here. Um, it's just that from from our perspective, like the difference between these guys and every other race. And so now that we're at 50% here, um, I have 21 tanks. I'm just going to go ahead and head back. Yeah, the difference between these guys and every other race is just so stark that that you can make mistakes, you can play suboptimally, but no one can fight you. Like these empire fleets, they're no match for me. It's just a matter of time and like me trying to get them in under 20 turns. Um Do. All right, so they've got an actual fleet that they're trying to put together here. Hmm, because my arc didn't get there on time. Well, these guys should still be able to hold their own. 
these Corvettes are all lasers, so we'll just stay at distance and they will run. Great. And now it's 16 troops versus 21 tanks. So we'll go ahead and fight guerrilla style. They protected the system. And we'll see what we can do. Yeah, they don't have the manpower to actually cause too much trouble for me here, so we'll keep making some more defensive ships. And when you're blockaded, by the way, you can't unplug your arc and just fight it, so they'll just try to leech you down or whatever. Oh, hey, the Cravers are over here. More prey for next time. Well, Gorilla again. They're, they're going to conscript. Oh, no, they didn't. So, ta-da! Turn 30, we've taken out the capital of another major civilization. We plan As we planned, we um, hook ourselves up here, and we are using three planets again. We are ecstatic from the various things here. And huzzah. So, so we can upgrade our fleet here to whatever we want it to be. Um, we'll go take out their last place in a second as soon as we recharge our manpower, which is recharging quite quickly since we're, we have these minor civilization relationships giving us 150 manpower a turn. Um, so yeah, this is kind of how the Vodiani work. We're going to be gathering influence little by little. Um, oh, this hunting grounds. Interesting. So you can get some, some influence from that. Um, see, this is kind of how the, Vo the Vodiani play at this stage of the game, where if things work out well, you create an arc, and even without finding any upgrades, like this time we didn't find a single upgrade um, to our weapons or whatever, but but because we had enough essence for an arc, we could go and it's only a matter of time until this AI falls. And if you're a human player or whatever, it doesn't matter, you will fall because that's just how the Vodiani work. Um, so we'll go through and do a couple of other checks real quick as we say, like, okay, let's pretend that we're going to keep the arc there for now and not go... Uh, we will pick up and go dump some tanks on him in a little while. Um, so, as far as other things go, we have Toys for Boys going on, which we may not even need when we're anchored. Yep, we're still devoted there, so we can have, oh, I don't know, whatever we want. Yeah, we don't want to use our influence because influence is too valuable for helping with the science. Oh, sorry, influence is too valuable for helping with the minor sieves. We have our trading companies. We didn't need any extra dust here, so we didn't even sell any of our stuff. Um, but we could easily, you know, turn this into dust trees or transbind bonus, both of which would be fine. Producing 256 science a turn. Not crazy, but. Uh, by no means unstop. Uh, by no means too shabby. Uh, and as we move to our second arc, which will allow us to keep this place consistently, um, that will only get better. And as we do things like, uh, if we were to get some development grants, which we might be able to do, for example, yeah, like with this with 15 jade onyx here, let's play optimally for a second. Say like, okay, we want that 15 jade onyx. We're gonna sell some strategics, like we don't need all this titanium. Let's then sell 100 titanium, buy 15 jade onyx, and then use the development grants here, and now we're getting 500 manpower a turn. Much better science. We're up to 430 science, and 
plus 317 dust. Um, and we've scouted out these places such that, let's see, if we wanted development grants from another guy here. Oh, this is this one gives you essence tribute that we can demand, which is kind of sweet. Yeah, instead of the migration, the guys that would otherwise give you migration, you can demand essence tribute from. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how the first 30 turns of Vodiani go if they're working well. We've already taken out a neighbor, and we can, we're well on our way to going and taking out another neighbor. Okay, so with this, I'm going to flip over to a different game. As I talked about before, this worked out pretty well for a first one. Um, and now we'll see if we can get a game where things don't go quite so well for the Bodiani. See you guys later. Hey guys, we are back. I've played a couple of games of Vodiani, and uh, we're going to keep moving forward to see if we uh, find a good one for a demonstration of how tough it can be. So I guess, see if we can find a bad one. Um, so here we are on Octans. Let's look out. We've got a pinwheel galaxy. And we're going to start out by equipping our hero again. Uh, I'm going to yeah not go deeply into the mechanics, because we just want to kind of play through 30 turns pretty quickly to figure out where we would be by comparison. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just say, yep, we'll start with Xenolinguistics. Looking at this thing here, all right, we've got a Mediterranean and a Tundra. The Mediterranean has this thing. So instead of Xenolinguistics, we're going to do Rare Earth first. Because we only have one uh, planet to start on, we only get 20 science, which is a bummer. And so we'll go. One, two, uh, hold our guy here. We'll switch those guys around and apply. And here we'll add in this thing. Pull off this, go here. Um, that'll be all of our dust, actually. Should be okay though. Because we have to keep our ship powerful. So we'll apply that. And we'll shoot one down there, and then we will grab one of these. We'll grab the one over the Mediterranean, obviously. Which is unsurprisingly Hyperion. Nice. Alright, for politics. We're at 45% right now, which means Toys for Boys will not help us, so we'll do Super Tax. But we only get the benefit of one from Super Tax, which means we're making almost no dust. Uh, and we'll have a cold and a Mediterranean. So what we need first is actually Cerebral Reality to get a little bit of extra dust so we can support ourselves. And our Leecher shouldn't move yet. Let's see if we get some sense of where we're going here. <laughs> okay, so there's not a better system for us to pull our thing onto. Oh, and I meant to, uh, yeah, we just wasted a little bit more dust, didn't we? Let's do these other curiosities. Should've done that last turn. Polar Tempests, Molten Springs. Okay, and that will separate, and we have to choose which way to go. So we're like in the middle of one of these spirals, so probably there will be someone out this way, but there will definitely be someone like in towards the center of the galaxy with much higher likelihood. So I'm going to run my hero towards the center of the galaxy. Uh, it's so hard with the leecher though, because the leecher doesn't move very fast. He only moves at four. So if I find, so I'm going to be sending my wheel out this way to explore. And some, and then this thing will, looks like it's on a decent path for exploring that direction. Um, 
<laughs> but it's quite challenging to decide what to do with the leecher. I tend not to, especially when you're going three completely different directions like this, I don't want to just throw them out like this way, for example, because then it'll be like six or seven turns before you can get to a minor sieve over there. And that sounds awful. So also with our hero leveling up, we're down to plus one dust. Um, but we'll have our Mediterranean in a few turns. So that's okay. And I'm going to keep the leecher at home so that I can respond appropriately. Uh, it doesn't look like there's guys out there. Alright, I'm going to throw a probe that way. Because since I'm not exploring this way with any with either of my ships, I really want to see if there's like if there's a minor sieve there or here. Like I really want to know so that I can salvage this. All right, moving forward. What did I discover? Oh, okay, random nebula there. Yeah. Oh, dead end. Great. And when I'm in exploring mode here, um, I don't want to take time to check out curiosities. I want to just keep moving along. So I'll like try to get to the next one, and then when it, when there's when there are branches, then I'll throw out more probes. Ah, uh, booger, <laughs> booger, booger, booger. Oh. So. It's an atoll Mediterranean area. It's actually a nice system down there. Uh, are there some... I don't want the subterraneans. The anomalies are what give us ships and stuff, but I'm a little worried because we... because curiosities aren't important at all until we find essence. So I'm not going to waste any time checking out these curiosities until we find some minor sieves. Although what I will do is since I'm close to the center of the galaxy here, when I get here, I'll use my two probes and throw them towards the center. Um, or like maybe this way, because it might actually be gettable. The problem is that having things off star lanes also doesn't help a whole lot. Okay. So we've got pirates there and here. All right, tundra. So this is our same constellation. Oh, okay. So let's throw one, two. And then I want to come back over here. And, oh boy, I'm going to give it one more turn. We'll see if, oh god, it needs to be a little bit faster. <laughs> this is turning into such garbage. It's already turn five. We've done nothing at all. <laughs> We're at 39 points. OK. Yeah, we have no essence, no dust. Uh huh. If we use this, and maybe if we find a minor sieve in here, we might at least get some impressing on it, and like get the manpower and whatever other boosts. Uh, after this, we're definitely going to want to build uh, another exploration ship. We can't build that ship first in this setting, by the way, guys, because we actually won't have the dust to support it. Uh, so we'll actually go to zero dust. So here, let's build something like, actually, I think two probes is plenty. We want it to be super fast. So let's do something like that, and we'll go with that for wheel three. We can't build hulls because we don't have the dust for it. Now here, OK, can't go there because they're pirates. And I think th I've never seen these pirates spawn on minor sieves. It's always been on empty nodes. Um, so that suggests to me that that's not a minor sieve there either. 
Although, it wouldn't surprise me if... Well... I think that the quest actually said... Hold on, let's check it. On, in or near your home constellation. So it doesn't have to be the same constellation. This can actually be off-piste all the way over here. Which makes that very hard to get. Until we have our arc, which can have 12 or 15 move speed. And... Uh, we get baryonic particles and we can just charge it over there. <laughs> Alright, so it's still equally likely that we'll find it this way or this way. I'm hoping this way, but God, do I want to start moving my leecher in one of these directions? He's a terrible explorer. He's got no vision. So you almost want him to be following. Yeah, I guess uh, I guess I'm going to move him this way because I want him to be ready to follow up on discovering something over here. On this side, unless, like, if we discover something with the last turn of this probe, and I think this one is not going to reveal anything, then we can turn him around still. Oh, hello, we discovered the academy. The desert and a broken planet. Okay, now you have five move left. So we're going to throw one here and use your two remaining to go here. And we're going to really, really hope that you find something. Uh huh. And so we've got still one turn to rare earth foams. But at least we have 30 science now. Okay, there's nothing there and nothing here. We have an ocean, snow, arctic, ice. Look at all those curiosities. Oof. So, all right, we're gonna throw a probe over this way and then we're gonna explore up this way. Whoa, but this is looking not good. Um, oh, and we see that this is the end of the constellation over here. Okay, so we're doing a pretty good job exploring. We found two dead ends with nothing, just, just from probes. So this was a pretty efficient use of things over here. I'm glad I didn't go that way. And so we can stop him from going in a silly direction. Um, and have him go this way instead, so that he can help explore the other way. And it also seems like it was a pretty good decision to take the leecher off to the east. We'll get, cool, a bunch of extra fids from rare earths there. We discovered the pulsos here, and they're thinkers and tinkers, and they like us. I hate it when they like us. Um, yeah, it does at least mean that with one praising, with 25, they will get, or sorry, with yeah, 25 influence, they will get to the point where they're giving us stuff. So I'll take it for sure. Aha! Okay, so this is not super early. Uh, the problem is that pirates are about to spawn. All right, so we've got to get our guy over here quickly, quickly, quickly. But we can start getting a little bit of of uh, essence. And the fact that we already have our leecher here is pretty good. <laughs> so. They're temperate. And you get bonuses to peaceful treaty costs. Building the ship here is also definitely the right solution. <laughs> There's just not a whole lot we can do. Oh ho! We have an actual major sieve and another miner over here. 
Oh, and there's no other connectors here, so these guys are... Oh, no, there it is. There is a connector. So they're not super isolated. Also, I wanted to show that if we, you saw that these guys were going plus one before, that's how they have the one in influence. If you are leeching from them, they don't like that very much. So it'll take two more turns. It'll actually be turn 11, Ugh. which is when pirates spawn before this leecher gets there, which means he won't be able to defend himself. So I have to get my hero over there. Cool, we have another friend. We're gonna wanna start talking with him. And yeah, and let's do this one a little bit off this path. And as I said, I actually can't take the leecher here on his own because by the time he gets there next turn, even though he could get there in two turns, right? By the time he gets there, there's gonna be pirates that spawn, which means I have to decide if I even want this guy to leech anymore because next turn pirates will spawn and he can't fight them by himself. So either he has to retreat and I lose 40% of his health or 60% of his health for 13 more essence, um, which I'm actually, it's not worth it because I need to kill those pirates so I have to retreat with him. And then this guy should be really fast, so he can catch up well. That's good. Um, <laughs> and then I guess we'll do here. Getting a bit more science, even though it's not perfect, is probably the right call. OK. And this one's ocean snow. Yeah, that's right. Nice. I had all those curiosities there. And it is a curiosity based reward, which is kind of interesting, but not really something that we can afford to compete for too much right now. Because we got to get on that essence. All right, I'm level three. Can give us some more sh fleet health. Cool. Everyone will meet up here. So, turn eleven. We're still at thirty-five science. Um. We don't have any essence. So the question of what the best thing to do is here, a bit up in the air. So we're gonna have Xeno Industrials next turn. These buildings suck for the Vodiani because they'll only ever give like, in, in our current one, it would give plus five industry. Um, so getting the Hyperium isn't terrible, but I think I actually wanna build landscaping instead because we might be able to build the thing that gives plus 30 food and at least start growing a little bit better. Okay. Yeah, so this miner sieve actually wasn't even too far away. But we'll see how good of a job we can do here. So we got our Xeno linguistics. We got our five guys. So I think that the fastest way to do this will be to merge these three and get there in two turns. Because if we took the other guy, that oh, would still be two turns. All right, so we just all go together. We all go together. Now do we want Xeno Industrials first or Public Privates first? They're both bad because we don't have any Temperates or Fertiles. 
and we don't have enough science to go get deserts or toxics for sure. Yeah, we could move to this place if we wanted. Steps, Jadonix. I do like Jadonix. Because we can like pick up our whole arc and just relocate if we wanted to. We have the dust if we wanted to do it. But yeah, we would take two turns. Uh, or here. That was the atoll. Arid. Yeah, that's actually a pretty good spot. We might think about relocating ourselves there. Hmm. That's actually kind of a nice idea. So how much does it take for us to take our arc? This is our home arc, right? And we just if we just gave it more move speed. Oh, it costs us a lot actually. We don't have that cash. Cause we can't like if we were to unplug it and try to replug it down there. Oh, we can't do it twice in the same turn. It's going to take us four turns to go down there. So three more. <laughs> we lost all our science. Well, and we lose 26 a turn. Ugh. So we can make it down there, actually. Cyberflora, Eden Incense, Resource Deposits. I think we'd do it, even without, well, oh yeah, we can't, we can't afford it because we need to make it for three more turns. So we're going to book it down here and relocate. That way we can research Arid next, the PEV scale, before doing anything else. Um, and then we'll have three planets that we can use. Having three planets is so, 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 so good. So we'll just take a pretty strong hit, but we'll make it. I probably wouldn't have done that if I didn't make the error of trying to disconnect and reconnect twice. And sure enough, okay, sure enough, here are the pirates that we expected. They are kinetics and kinetic missiles. So we're going to, let's see, we're kinetics, kinetics, and kinetic missiles with our flag. So, yeah, I think that we out-kinetic them, so we're just going to do hull plate absorption. Oh, it's got a little bit of something left there. So I think we can finish them off. And we'll start sapping, 63 per turn. Couple of them that way, that way, and that way. And one more that way for good measure. We'll put a bunch of these curiosities out to see if we can find something next, a target or whatever. Uh, yeah, probes, I mean, of course, not curiosities. And then, oh, still two more turns before we get back to being able to do things. So this is where we're going to end it with the 30 turns on the tougher Vodiani, or bad Vodiani. You see, I did the game quite similarly um, to the first one. It's just that it's much tougher to get going. We are struggling, but it looks like we might be able to get a little something here. Uh, I'll, I'll finish up this turn by getting some dust using the marketplace. So we're going to probably go with, well, definitely not transvine. 
and see if we can get some red sang. We can. So we'll get our red sang and we'll start the essence tribute here. Which did nothing as far as I can tell. Great. No, it did nothing. Okay. Anyway, um, I think the bigger point to take home from this is that there's nothing particularly strong or overpowered about my civilization, right? And what I've what I've created here um, in either the first game or in this game. Like, I have one population, it's kind of crap, whatever, but the fact that I have this ship that can just build up manpower and I can be getting dust and science from the minor sieves, um, and but that does science and manpower from the minor sieves and be plowing forward with my 5,400 power rookie arc, it's just not fair. Um, yeah, it's it's not really fair at all. And so the Vodiani will often lose in the late game. Um, or I think we haven't played too many games in, into the late game. Like they, if if there's a you know, a, I don't know, a Lumeris player over here might lose, right? If it takes so long for me to be taking my arcs, oh, take, using my arcs to take over their places one by one by one. Um, but what I would basically do next is you take a locust type ship, or a termite, David calls them. So let's just use the same terminology. We have like a termite type ship. And we take the leecher class, and you just load it up like this. It's got four moves. And now you can use one of those ships, or two of those ships, and it'll seep your manpower instantly down. You can never fight them because your arc is going to do all the fighting and will carry extra manpower. And then you just take over that system, kill everybody, move to the next system. Take over that system, kill everybody, move to the next system, and so on and so on. And, and you can do that pretty effectively, even while falling super far behind in science and just take out player after player. So if you had to be in a PvP game and you were playing as this empire, what could you really do, right? Like if you were staring at this ship with 6,000 power, 5,000 power, like your game is over. Your only hope is that they peter, I peter out in the late game. You can't build a fleet to protect against yourself. You can't build enough um, enough defenses for me to fall behind or whatever. You just have to get leeched and sieged until you die and hope that it takes me so long that I fall behind as well. And that's just not a fun way to play. Um, so that's why we don't use Vodiani in our PvP games. That said, I have to say like their play style is a different and interesting one. And um, David and I should definitely do another video highlighting some of the problems that I've talked about here and saying, giving some ideas for how we think that they could be fixed from a ga game mechanic state to be a little less overpowering. Um, sneak peek, I think one of the first things that would make them better is not having the arc with an ability to attack uh, and have it be last in the priorities of things that, that would be attacked so that when say this corvette is here, so I couldn't attack this corvette, and if the corvette attacked, it would hit my hero and these guys before it would hit my arc. That could actually help a lot. Um, the, yeah, and, and so we'll do that kind of stuff in a separate video. Um, the other thing that I want, I always have to say about the Vodiani before ending this is like their art and lore is just so cool that when I picked up the game, they were actually the first race that I wanted to learn how to play. And only after 
uh, figuring out their mechanics and, and how it felt to completely feast or famine. Um, did I decide to set them aside and, and we played a couple of PvP games and it was never very fun. Um, so I think in solo games, they can still be enjoyable. You can still, you know, take Vodiani like this one into the late game and s figure out how to survive. I recommend if you're going to take them into the late game, do yourself a favor and pretend that this tech, this hero ability doesn't exist because it's just a little bit too much um, overtuned right now. And, and so with all of that said, um, I think I'm going to close out this video. I hope you guys enjoyed, learned a little something, and um, if you decide to take Vodiani into your solo game, or if your friends are very sporting with your friends, uh, hopefully some of the strategies that I've highlighted here will be helpful. And uh, yeah, this then highlight or this rounds out all of the uh, factions of Endless Space, with Vodiani being the last one. Now we have an expert guide on our YouTube channel for all of the races. So I hope you guys have enjoyed, and I will catch you next time.